Okay, welcome to another video. Uh, this is designed for Edexcel students preparing for a synoptic paper, paper three, which looks at both the micro and macroeconomic aspects of a particular policy. And in this uh, video, we'll take a look at the economics of the energy price cap introduced by Off German to the UK energy market in 2018. This could be a relevant question to think about in revision, assess the possible micro and macroeconomic impact of an energy price cap in the UK. If we think a little bit about uh, the cost breakdown for an energy bill facing a typical household in, in Britain, this data is for 2018, and it shows that the costs for environmental and social obligations, which includes the minimum carbon price in the European Emissions Trading Scheme, makes up about 10% of the total fuel bill. But in fact, wholesale costs, the cost of buying the energy from the wholesale market, that makes up the biggest share with just over 36% of the total. This chart, just again, by way of context, shows the aggregate profits. That profit, of course, is the difference between revenue and cost of the big energy suppliers in the UK, the largest six. And they show that the aggregate profits in millions of pounds um, fell, or had been falling, from about three and a half billion in 2010-2011 down to about two billion now. But the high profits and the high fuel bills are of course a topical issue for students to discuss. Uh, there is quite a bit of switching going on in the market, more and more consumers finding it easier to make a, a switch from one supplier to another. In fact one and a half million people left the big six suppliers between June 2017 and 2000, 2018, according to Ofgem's latest report. There have been a whole series of new entrants into the electricity and gas market. They now take up about a quarter of the whole market share, but none of them have so far managed to really break through to, the, to, to challenge the scale of the big six energy suppliers. So that's a little bit of context. Let's look at how you can build evaluation uh, analysis and then evaluation points. So in the 25 marker, we're looking really to build two KAA points, one focusing on the micro impact and one focusing on the macro impact. You probably won't have time to develop three points, so two points well developed will be fine to get the top marks. My first point focuses on the impact of a price gap on consumers and in particular households in fuel poverty. Let's take a look at my answer. So I defined first of all what a price cap is, a price ceiling in the, in, the, um, in the market, legal price ceiling, which is in this case been set by the industry regulator off GEM, the Office of General Energy Markets. And they've brought in a cap of just over £1,100 to 11 million customers who pay the dual fuel bill, electricity and gas, they pay by direct debit. Let's see how we develop the point here. One micro effect of a cap is to reduce the supernormal profits of some of the energy suppliers. This cap means they can't charge a profit maximizing price. As a result, the price will be lower than if it was profit maximization. And as a result, there will be an increase in consumer surplus. And then I define what that is. The difference between what people are willing to pay and able to pay and what they actually do pay. Uh, so consumer surplus may go up and there should also be a possible reduction in fuel poverty, particularly amongst low income households. Fuel poverty happens when you need to spend more than 10% of your income to keep heating on to an adequate level. And basically the cap is designed to protect large families in particular, and older people who don't have very high incomes, uh, protect against overcharging and ensure that you can't charge an unfair rate on each unit of energy used. So my analysis there is the impact on consumers. And you could support this with a diagram. If you've been revising your theory of the firm and monopoly diagrams, this diagram shows uh, an inelastic demand for, let's say, energy. The normal profit maximization output is Q1, where marginal cost meets marginal revenue, and they could charge P1. But if we, if we introduce a capped price, a lower price, uh, that's called, that's shown by the green area there, the green line. Then output goes up to Q2, the profit falls to the green shaded area. So the monopoly, the energy supply can still make a profit, but the supernormal profit will be lower and the consumer will pay a reduced price. 
evaluation of the micro point. And again, I'm trying to evaluate the argument that consumers will benefit. So here we go. The micro impact depends on how close the cap is to the average fuel bill for households and also the coverage. So in the UK, this cap only applies to customers who pay by direct debit. Build the evaluation. Some suppliers, some energy companies may choose to increase the price of their other tariffs to compensate. Other suppliers may respond by cutting costs, increasing productivity so that profit margins are maintained. However, most of the costs of supplying energy are actually not under the control of firms. So the wholesale price of energy is set by market forces. The government sets a minimum price for carbon and emissions trading. So therefore, you know, keep in mind here that there's, there's not much that uh, the regulator can do. And indeed, if the regulator increases the cap, then the overall impact will be limited. Then you move on to your macro point. So your macroeconomic point can focus on anything from growth to inflation to jobs to trade to fiscal policy. You're linking now the, the price cap in energy to a macroeconomic objective. And I'm going to try here to link it to aggregate demand and GDP growth. So clearly electricity and gas is used by many millions of people in the UK and businesses and households. So there should be a macroeconomic effect. I'm arguing that this time the capped energy price might help to control inflation. Fuel, uh, household spending on fuel and gas and things is quite heavily weighted in the CPI. So depending on how fast uh, wages and earnings are rising in nominal terms, a fall in inflation might then lead to an increase in, in real disposable income, which would then contribute to an increase in consumer spending on other goods and services. People would have a bit more spending power as a result of the cap and they could then increase their consumer spending on other things. Therefore a cap might, uh, might contribute to increased retail sales and perhaps a faster rate of growth in the short term. Households might also be able to use uh, a cap on energy prices to put a little bit more away to help build up their savings. So basically arguing here that a price cap could bring down inflation, increase people's real incomes and, and provide a boost to consumer spending and saving. And you could, if you wanted to, again, support your macro point with a diagram showing an outward shift in aggregate demand. But then, of course, you have to evaluate the point. My evaluation here is macro. So my first KA point, uh, the previous KA point, was that this could, could stimulate more consumption and more GDP growth. However, pretty obvious way of starting an evaluation program. However, although a cap might lift consumer spending goods and services, Putting a, a ceiling on energy bills might actually have a negative effect on investment. Investment by the energy companies in particular, and of course investment's also a component of AD. Put the formula in to show the examiner you know what the formula is. We know that the profit margins of energy companies are pretty low, about 5%, and if their prices are capped, they might have less profit to fund infrastructure, um, and therefore uh, that would be a fall in investment. And so fall in AD. And low energy prices through the cap might also reduce the profitability of investment in renewable energy, such as offshore wind, tidal, and solar power. Another aspect is that some energy firms, if you cap the price, they might cut the number of jobs. And power, I think, have already cut their number of jobs by 10 15%, and therefore, fall in the number of people employed in the sector could have negative multiplier effects. So, my KAA point here was to argue that an energy cap could stimulate aggregate demand. My evaluation point is, on the other hand, a fall in investment, perhaps, perhaps a contraction in jobs, could have a negative effect on aggregate demand. So you're evaluating a macro point. Now, if you have time in a 25 marker, it's a good idea to try to come to uh, a little bit of a reasoned conclusion. It doesn't have to be a, a lengthy paragraph. Just bring some thoughts together. Here's a little attempt at that. Overall, this is a good word to use. I feel that the energy price cap will have more of a micro economic impact. This is because there are many factors affecting consumer spending other than energy bills. Interest rates set by the Bank of England, the rate of unemployment, house prices, etc. However, the industry regulator has set a price cap that's actually fairly high and it saves the average household only about well less than £2 a week. 
They've also said that a cap will be reviewed and changed up to two times a year. If the price of oil and gas globally goes up, they're prepared to increase the cap. One might argue that this cap is therefore an example of regulatory failure, with the industry regulator Ofgem operating mainly in the interest of, of the suppliers, the big six energy companies, for example, rather than energy users, for example, households. So there we go, that's how you can uh, develop evaluation point. Indeed, just recently, uh, on the 1st of April, um, the regulator has allowed the price cap to go up by £117 a year. And the big suppliers have all announced that prices will go up, hence a little bit of tacit collusion there. So that uh, price cap will now rise to about £1,230. So it looks as if this price cap is set to increase, having only just been introduced. There we go, here's a video showing how you can address a synoptic essay question.